What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we're going to be discussing something extremely important within the Division 2. Now what we're looking at here is a light extended 7.62 magazine. This is an incredibly potent and powerful attachment. In fact, this is meta warping. This is the only reason guns like the AKM and the FAL are even viable within the end game. However, most people don't have this attachment. In fact, most people don't even know how to get it. And that's because the game doesn't tell you. There are some blueprints and attachments and blueprints for attachments that are direct rewards for doing things like certain projects, for doing things like side missions, but the vast majority are not acquired this way. The game just straight up does not tell you how to get them. And this is really important because like this magazine, you need to have access to it if you want to make a gun like an FAL work in the end game. Because especially with extended magazines, they're gonna increase your overall damage output so much like the meta currently is completely warped between assault rifles with 5.56 and even rifles that use 5.56 just because of the light extended 5.56 magazine, which is a direct reward. The 7.62 mag is the only thing that even comes close to competing with it, but there's so much more out there. There's sights, uh, there's certain barrel stabilizers, all this stuff that simply isn't acquired through direct rewards. So how do you get them? Well, that's what this video is going to explain. First and foremost, you need to get to world tier 4. So how do you do that? Well, as you're leveling up, strongholds are going to be made available to you. One is doable at level 26, the other level 28, and the last one level 30. Now once you complete all three of these strongholds, of course I would recommend doing them in that order, the level 26 one, then the 28 one, then the 30 one, you are going to go into world tier one. In fact, when you beat the level 30 stronghold, at the end, it will literally say advancing to world tier one in 20, 19, 18, and it will just bring you to world tier one. Now then you have to make it all the way to, like I said, world tier four, and you do that by still completing strongholds, but in a little bit of a different way. You have to do one stronghold to advance a world tier. So if you hover over the stronghold, you'll see that it requires a couple of different things. Firstly, you have to do two separate missions involved with this stronghold, and then you have to get to an overall gear score. So for example, to advance from World Tier 1 to World Tier 2, you have to do the two missions associated with the stronghold, and then get to 275 gear score. Once you have both of those things available, you can then do that stronghold. Beating that stronghold will advance you to World Tier 2, do the same thing to get to three, and the same thing to get to four. Now, once you do reach world tier four, a brand new mechanic involving control points is going to appear. Previously, when you did control points, in that when you took enemy control points and then established your own good guy control point, you just got a supply room with a bunch of rewards. But now, with world tier four, control points are going to work a little bit differently. So now when you open up your map and you look at an enemy control point, it'll actually have a level, a little zero one next to it. So you can advance these levels and if you beat a control point at level three or greater, you will get a blueprint every single time. And this blueprint can be for a random piece of armor or a weapon or importantly, an attachment. That is how I got my light extended 7.62 magazine. But how do you advance the levels of control points? Well, you have to do the random activities connected with this control point. So public executions, um, stuff like territory control, killing convoys, all that stuff is going to increase the level of enemy controlled control points. And usually it's just by one. So you can look at the map, look at a control point, and then look at the nearby events. And you can actually see little red lines that connect these events to a certain control point. Be aware though, that just because a control point is in one area of the map, you actually might have to move over a certain area to see things connected with this control point as you can see in the background gameplay. So it's not always contained in the exact area of the map that the control point is in. 
Also, another important thing to know is that sometimes certain random events will advance the level of the control point by two. Stuff like elite convoys and elite territory controls will actually have a little plus two next to them. So if you just do one of those, the control point will go up to level three and then you can take it on and get a blueprint. Now it's also very important to mention that the control points can actually go beyond level 3. You can up a control point to level 4. Doing so will make enemies harder and more numerous and you will end up getting more rewards but you're still only going to get one blueprint. So if you're just interested in farming the crap out of blueprints, trying to get certain attachments, just increase it to level three, keep away from level four. It's gonna increase the difficulty and not increase the rewards of specifically what you're looking for. And so, there you have it. And if you want all of the attachments and blueprints in the game, this is what you're going to need to do. Obviously, you're going to have to complete all of the projects and all of the side quests that specifically give out attachments and blueprints and blueprints of attachments. But the vast majority are just achieved from farming level 3 control points in world tier 4. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, found this helpful. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Division 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.